Hi, I am here today uh, with a presentation from Prince George's Community Memorial Library System. And I'm really excited to be here presenting Plant-Based Basics with Rooted Dish. My name is Granetta Coleman and I'm the founder of Rooted Dish, a company I started to help bring healthy lifestyle changes into people's lives. And I'm really excited to talk to you about plant-based food because plant-based food is all the rage right now. Um, so I really wanna share with you some information in case you want to try and make this uh, change in your eating habits. So I wanna tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I grew up in Maryland in Silver Spring, and here I am as a toddler um, and as a teen gymnast. And I grew up on the standard American diet, which had a lot of meat, a lot of cheese, a lot of eggs, um, and just dairy in general, a few vegetables, and a little bit of fruit. Um, and I was okay. I thrived as a gymnast on that diet, competed a lot. Um, but as I got older, and I went to law school and I got a desk job. I started to get heavier and I started um, having blood pressure issues. And so I went vegetarian and that helped me lose weight and um, not increase my medications. Um, and then I had my daughter in uh, 2007 and there she is at three years old. Um, and I was heavier than I'd ever been. And I was on a lot of blood pressure medication, particularly for, for the pregnancy. And I decided to go vegetarian again to try to control my weight, control my blood pressure. Uh, but I, the China study had come out, which is a longevity study that showed that a vegan or plant-based diet is actually great for longevity. And so I said, I'm gonna try going vegan. And I had support from some family members in other states and we did it together. And I lost uh, 20 pounds and then 10 more pounds. I have a lot of energy and my blood pressure is managed with much less medication. So I am, I'm super happy with being a plant-based human. And let's talk about what that means. So if you are on a plant-based eating plan, it means you don't eat any animal products. That means you don't eat any beef, any poultry, any seafood, no dairy products. So no cheese or yogurt or ice cream made from dairy. So from cows or goats or any, any animal. And you don't eat any eggs. So that leaves people to wonder, well, you just took everything away what am I gonna eat? <laughs> Don't worry, I definitely eat things. Uh, but let's talk about why people might choose to be plant-based. Some people choose to be plant-based like me for their health, and I'll get into why, um, how plant-based diet can help with your health. Uh, some people get into a plant-based diet because they care about animals. And so that may be a way that you want to come into this, this lifestyle. Other people choose to go plant-based because of the environment. Um, growing plants and eating plants uses less water, less land, less energy um, than animal-based products. So it's really more sustainable for the planet. So a lot of people are really into um, eating plant-based for that reason. So these are three, three of the top tier reasons why people might want to go plant-based. So maybe one of those reasons is your reason. Um, and it can be a good uh, motivator for you to try this lifestyle out. So let's talk about why a plant-based diet is healthier than an animal-based diet. So a plant-based diet is high in fiber. And fiber is a, um, is a substance that's only found in plants because of how, how they are made, um, their cell structure. And fiber helps you um, be healthier because number one, it feeds your gut bacteria and keeps your gut healthy. Um, number two, it fills you up with fewer calories so that you're able to maintain a healthy weight easier. Uh, fiber also helps pull toxins and cholesterol out of your body. So you may have seen on a box of oats where it says heart healthy, um, lowers cholesterol. That's why it's the fiber in oatmeal that helps you um, 
helps lower your cholesterol. And animal-based products, since they are not plants, they don't have a plant cell structure, uh, don't have any fiber. So all those benefits, pulling out toxins, helping you manage your weight easier with lower calories are not available to you on an animal-based diet. Uh, plant foods are, have no cholesterol. So if you're worried about your cholesterol, um, not eating more cholesterol will help. Animal-based um, products are high in cholesterol, especially eggs and cheese. So um, watch out for those. And then plant-based foods are mostly low in fat. So if you want heart health, you want low fat foods instead of high fat animal-based foods. Um, in addition, fat is actually higher in calories than carbohydrates. So it's easier to um, have your weight be more than what you want when you're eating high fat food because it's just got many more calories in it. Um, and that's the next line is basically caloric density. If something is calorically dense, it means you eat a little bit of it and it's got a lot of calories. So that would be cheese, oil, meat, um, dairy products, eggs. Those are all calorie dense. So you eat a little bit and it's a lot of calories. On the other hand, plant-based foods have a low caloric density. That means if you eat a lot, it doesn't have a lot of calories. So you can be really full on a plant-based diet and actually not be eating a whole lot of calories, which makes it easier to be um, at your ideal weight. And you're not hungry because you get to eat a ton of food. It just doesn't have a lot of calories in it. And then the last um, thing I want to point out is that plant-based foods, because of because of what they have in them, they have antioxidants and antioxidants are great because they fight free radicals and free radicals are these little, um, uh, what do I want to call them, um, elements inside your body that run around um, damaging your cells, causing aging, causing cancer and antioxidants actually help prevent all of that damage. On the other hand, so they're cancer protective, um, they're anti-aging. On the other hand, animal-based products actually are carcinogenic. Um, there's been a lot of studies that show there's a link between animal products and cancer risk. So really minimizing those will help with preventing cancer. So let's talk a little bit about protecting your heart. So as I mentioned in that previous slide, animal-based products are low in cholesterol and they're low in fat. And that's great because cholesterol is actually what can clog your arteries. So you see here, there's this, this plaque that's forming and you could get a clog as you see here. And that could cause you to have a stroke or a heart attack um, and so preventing that is really important. And in the 90s, there was a study done that showed that you can actually reverse this kind of plaque buildup in your arteries by eating a vegetarian diet. So it, and it, that had never been done before. So this amazing study showed that it can not only, it can reverse heart disease. So not only reverse it, but help prevent it in the first place. So that's one important reason why you may want to go plant-based. Another is to control your blood pressure, like me. Um, plant-based foods are naturally low in sodium, whereas meat and eggs or, or meat and cheese and other animal products are higher in sodium. So sodium can impact your blood pressure, as many people know. Uh, plant-based foods also have other minerals in them that can be help, helpful for blood pressure, like potassium, which you would find in potatoes and bananas and lots of foods, but those are just two, um, like potassium, calcium is, is found in dark leafy greens, it's found in like plant-based milks, it's found in beans and magnesium. All three of those minerals have, have um, blood pressure implications and they're all found in plant-based foods. 
So one of the big um, categories of health that are super, that's super important right now is diabetes. There are, are so many people in the United States, millions, 34 million um, people with diabetes and 88 million people with prediabetes, many of whom don't even know it. Um, so if you are in one of these two categories, a plant-based diet can be really powerful to help you prevent and possibly reverse diabetes. Um, and that's because of the low fat content in plant-based foods. Um, research has found that um, although sugar, you know, is important, and um, some, some diets approach diabetes by trying to limit sugar, um, to get at the heart of why, why your insulin doesn't work, you actually need to get the fat out of your diet. Um, and many people have found that if you get the fat out of your diet, your insulin can start working again and you can you know, reduce the amount of medication you need on diabetes and potentially get off of it. Um, and if you have diabetes, you wanna make sure you do this, you do a plant-based diet, with your doctor, with your medical provider, um, so that they make sure your medications are, are accurately um, uh, measured. Because a plant-based diet can be so strong, your medication might work too well and you'll have super low blood sugar. So you wanna work with your healthcare provider if you're gonna do a plant-based diet and you have diabetes medication. Some other conditions that a plant-based diet has been shown to um, reduce the risk of are cancer risk, uh, migraines, arthritis, menstrual cramps, and acne. Um, and there's many others, but these are just a few of the other reasons you might wanna consider from a health perspective transitioning to a plant-based diet. So I talked about you know, what you don't eat. I've talked about why you might wanna eat a plant-based diet, but I haven't told you what you actually eat. So let's talk about that, the how of it. And, and actually, when you break it down, it's pretty simple. This is the power plate, and the power plate shows the plant-based food groups. This is what you would eat. And you can combine these food groups into many, many different um, recipes that are delicious. So let's just run through these food groups so you understand what would be on your plate. So fruit is a big food group. You find your favorite fruits and you eat them and enjoy them. A lot of times I will have fruit at breakfast um, or as a snack, it makes a great snack. Um, then there are whole grains and whole grains really is anything from brown rice and quinoa to millet or farro. You might have some steel cut oats or oatmeal. You might have some whole wheat bread or corn or flour tortillas. That's the whole grains that I'm talking about. So there's a lot of selection in those whole grains. Then the next group is vegetables. And let me tell you, a bounty of vegetables are available to you. If you don't like lima beans, you don't have to eat lima beans. You find the vegetables that you like and you eat those in abundance like kale and collard greens, uh, romaine lettuce, tomatoes, eggplant, um, zucchini, cucumbers, carrots, peppers. I mean, I could go on and on. There's so many vegetables. So that's a big group. And then the legume group. The legume group is beans, all varieties of beans, black eyed peas, black beans, kidney beans, white beans. It also includes peas. So um, green peas, snap peas. It also includes tofu, um, which is made out of soybeans and tempeh, which is also made out of soybeans. And, and one of my favorites, lentils. Lentils are the ultimate fast food, especially red lentils, because they can cook in like 20 minutes. You can have a meal with brown rice, some red lentils, some spices, and uh, some vegetable side that you like, maybe sauteed spinach, and you have yourself a meal. So we call that the power plate because it gives you that strong plant-based power. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to put together a power plate meal. I do wanna mention before I start cooking though, 
if you are on a plant-based diet, B12 is something that uh, a vitamin that may be difficult for you to get because it's found in the soil and our um, plants are so clean when we get them now, there's no soil left on them and there's no consistent source of B12. So supplementing with B12 is something you'd want to do. Talk to your medical provider and find out how much you should take. Now I want to share a few resources with you. One of them is my website rooteddish.com, where I have a ton of plant-based recipes. Okay, not a ton, but I have some plant-based recipes. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I post lots of recipes of what I'm eating and, and all that great stuff at Rooted Dish. Um, PCRM.org is a great organization, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, and their mission is to teach people about plant-based cooking. And so I'm a Food for Life certified instructor through PCRM, and, and that way I teach um, classes with them. And I also health coach one-on-one -on -one through my company, Rooted Dish. Um, and PCRM has this great resource called the 21 Day Vegan Kickstart. Um, it's a free program where they walk you through a 21 day vegan eating plan. Um, and they provide you with recipes and grocery lists, and that is found on their website as well. So now I'm going to take you guys over to my kitchen, and I'm going to cook up a plant-based meal for you. All right, guys. Here we are. So what I'm going to make today, so what I'm going to make today is a black bean tacos with a slaw, a quick slaw. So um, I wanted this to be a fast meal for you guys. So you're gonna see how quickly you can put together a plant-based meal. So I have a bag of shredded coleslaw, and I like this one because it's got the red cabbage and the green cabbage. And so this is your vegetable group from the power plate. And not only is it the vegetable group, but it's a really healthy vegetable group. Um, cabbage is in the cruciferous vegetable family and cruciferous vegetables just have a lot of health benefits. So that would be cabbage, collard greens, broccoli, um, cauliflower, uh, kale, all of those are cruciferous vegetables. They're great to eat in abundance. So I wanted to show you a quick cruciferous recipe. So I have about a 10 ounce bag of coleslaw and I'm pouring in a quarter cup of rice vinegar. So here it is. Rice vinegar is nice and light, so it doesn't have the same bite as a balsamic vinegar. I'm just gonna pour that over top. And then I'm going to cut open a lime. And you need the juice of one lime. I have my little nifty juicer, it makes it easier. And limes have vitamin C. So we're gonna get that nice immunity protection that is available from vitamin C in this recipe. And then the last thing, I like a little kick. So I'm gonna put in a little bit of cayenne pepper. So my family likes things spicy. So I'm gonna put in about a quarter teaspoon of cayenne pepper. If your family doesn't like things spicy, then you can leave the cayenne pepper off or you can um, you know, just put the cayenne pepper on your portion and then leave the rest, you know, when you serve it and leave the rest pepper free. So now I'm just going to stir this up. And usually you want to let this just sit and marinate for about 20 minutes. So while we're cooking the main, we're going to let this sit and you can put it in the refrigerator and put a cover over it and just let it marinate but I'm just going to sit it off to the side. So the longer it marinates, the more the flavors will just get into that cabbage. 
Um, so you could let it sit 24 hours and really have it soak up that vinegar and that lime juice, or you can just do it quick, you know, 15, 20 minutes, and it'll be a little crisper um, and a little less um, pungent. So now I'm going to show you how to make some black bean tacos. All right. So black bean tacos, me, I'm going to make them with a can of pre-cooked black beans. This is really fast food. You have to rinse these and drain them to get the sodium off of them. So I've already done that with a colander and I have them here in this jar. And there's a couple of other things we have to get ready, but first I'm going to um, turn on my pan. I'll slide the cooktop into view once I prepped everything. But I'm just going to turn it on um, and get it heating up. Now, I didn't put any oil in my pan and I don't put any oil in because I wanna keep the calories low. Remember when we talked about calorie density. So oil is one of the densest calorie foods around. So if you're trying to watch your weight, you really want to watch added oil. So instead of having like an oil squeegee around, squeezer, I have mine full of water. And we're going to do what is called a water saute. And that's a way to cook with minimal oil um, so that my food has doesn't have all those extra calories, extra fat in it. So I'm going to start by cutting up this onion. Just gonna slice the end off. And I like to keep a little bowl nearby when I cook to just throw the scraps into. So I'm only gonna need half of this onion. So I'm gonna set the other half aside. I'm gonna just peel this. And onions are great because they actually have cancer protective um, compounds in them as well. Uh, onions and garlic are in the same family. So they both have cancer protective compounds in them. So, you know, eating your onions can lead to really good health. So I'm just gonna slice this up thin. And you don't have to be an expert cook to, you know, cook plant-based foods. You just have to be able to chop things up a little bit small. And with a few techniques, you could be well on your way to a plant-based diet. So I'm just gonna slide these over to the side and I'm gonna get my mushrooms ready. So these are just portobello mushrooms, but I just ran the water over top of them and brushed what little bit of dirt was on them off. Then I'm just gonna slice them up, kind of rough. Now, if your family doesn't like mushrooms, some people are just not in favor of mushrooms, even though they are very healthy for you, very low cal, um, you can swap this for another vegetable, like maybe zucchini, um, eggplant would be interesting, um, carrots, just any other vegetable that you wanna throw in here to um, complement your beans. So this is eight ounces of mushrooms that I'm going to chop up. And while I chop these, I'm actually gonna drop, my pan's hot, I'm gonna drop my onions in. And I'll show you that in a minute. But they're just in there in that dry pan. And if they start to stick, that's when I'm going to use my water spritzer to just add a little bit of water to make sure they don't burn. And I have my, my skillet on medium, medium heat. And this recipe is gonna make about six to eight tacos. It depends on how full you want your tacos. And I'll tell you, I've also preheated my oven to 350 degrees, just like on my taco shell um, instructions. So whatever taco shells you get, it'll tell you how, how warm to make the oven. So I've got that. And now the last ingredient I need to chop up is this jalapeno pepper. And in a jalapeno pepper, the heat is actually in the seeds and the white 
um, ribs. So I want it to be spicy, but I don't want it to be too spicy. So I just cut that part out and I'm only gonna use half of my jalapeno because I don't want the spice to be overwhelming. But once you try it, you can decide, oh, I want more spice or I want less. The beautiful thing about recipes is they are just guides. Um, they are not uh, rules or laws. So you get to decide how you want your food to taste and you get to decide what you're gonna put in it and in what proportions. All right, so you can see here, my onions are starting to stick. I'm just gonna put a little bit of water in there and I'm gonna stir them around. All right, I'm gonna let them keep cooking. I'm just moving them around a little bit. They got a little bit brown, that's okay. Just gonna add a little bit more water to make sure they don't um, burn. And I forgot, I have one more ingredient that I want to prep and that is my garlic cloves. So I use fresh garlic because it has more flavor. But if you wanted to use, um, you know, they have garlic in the jar, you could do that. Um, it's just gonna have um, extra ingredients in it. So look at the jar, look at the ingredients and decide if, it's, if that's the route you wanna go. But it is great for convenience so you don't have to keep cutting up this garlic. So I popped off three cloves. And now I'm gonna get the paper off. So you just use the side of your knife and you whack it. That will crack the paper and you can more easily get the paper off. So I'm gonna just do that a couple more times. And then I'm gonna share with you one of my favorite tools, kitchen tools of all time. I use it all the time. I should probably have two of them because uh, when it's dirty, I'm like, oh man, but I'm gonna show you whoops, how to cut the garlic without the tool and then with the tool. So if I was cutting, just let me stir this, make sure it doesn't burn, add a little bit of water. So if I was cutting this without my tool, I would just um, chop one direction, chop the other direction, and then I just put my hand on the end of the knife and just go from one side, trying to slice the pieces to the other. So you can just do that and you'll get a nice mince of garlic. I love this Joseph Joseph all metal rocker. You just put it on top of the clove, rock it side to side and you get your minced garlic, which I will just scrape off with a spoon. And instead of the um, difficulty of cleaning a garlic press, you just rinse it and you get rid of this little extra bit on the bottom. Joseph Joseph garlic rocker. I love it. All right. So now let me bring my, my pan back into view. Okay, so those onions look good. It takes about five minutes or so to get that going. Now I'm gonna add my mushrooms and mushrooms have a lot of water in them. So even though the pan was dry then, you could add a little bit of water if you wanted to, just to make sure things keep moving. Uh, but the mushrooms are going to release their own water. So I'm gonna add these mushrooms. And I'm gonna add the peppers. And then we're just gonna let that cook down. Oops, some things are escaping my pot in there. All right, so we're gonna let that cook down. While that is cooking down, I'm gonna have my beans on standby. I've got my garlic on standby. You don't wanna put the garlic in right away because garlic can burn really easily. So I wanna make sure that goes in um, towards the end of my recipe. Um, 
there's, we're also gonna add some soy sauce. This is low sodium soy sauce uh, for a little bit of salt. And we're going to add a little bit of cumin. Cumin is a great spice. Um, it's one of my top 10 that I use all the time. And it's used a lot in Mexican cooking. So I always have a lot of cumin around. Let me check these mushrooms. Looking good. I'm going to turn the heat up a little bit. They're starting to release some of their juices. We really want to cook these down. So while that is happening, I just want to show you um, the corn tortillas. So the corn tortillas I got, these happen to be from Trader Joe's. They're organic um, and they are crispy, crispy taco shells made of corn. There aren't very many ingredients, corn, sunflower oil, and a trace of lime. That's it. And I really like the fact that each shell only has three grams of fat. So three grams of fat in a serving is ideal for um, managing your weight. Um, if something has more than three grams of fat, you know, it could be like a higher fatty food that's going to um, make your weight loss or weight management more challenging. So you can look on the package and see, oh, how many, how many grams per serving? All right, these are looking pretty good. So one of the other things that I have to make this meal um, complete is some salsa. So this is a hot salsa. You can have any kind of salsa. One thing you wanna look for if you're concerned about blood pressure is making sure the salsa doesn't have too much sodium. Um, usually I get a salsa that is very low sodium or I just make, make my own. So that's an option as well. So as this continues to cook down, you see the water coming out. Now I'm gonna add my seasonings. I'm gonna add, you can add one to two teaspoons of cumin. I'm gonna add two because I like things pretty flavorful. If you don't like a whole lot of flavor, start with one teaspoon, see if you like it. If you want a little more, you can add a little more. And then I'm gonna add my garlic. All right. One of the things people find challenging with um, transitioning to a plant-based lifestyle is cooking. And so some of the things you can do to, when you first start out to reduce cooking is to buy pre-prepared food, um, buy frozen, um, frozen fruits and vegetables. You know, those are just as helpful, just as nutritious as fresh, um, sometimes even more so because they are frozen at the peak of freshness. Um, so convenience foods are okay. Um, especially when you're first starting out, you know, buying those pre-made veggie burgers. Eventually you might want to make your own, but it could be overwhelming to try to do everything at once. So going to the store, trying different brands, different options of pre-made vegan items um, could be the way to go to start out. Um, a really good vegan breakfast is oatmeal or you can look on PCRM's website and get a pancake recipe that doesn't have any um, cow's milk and doesn't have any eggs. Uh, almost everything can be veganized, almost everything. Uh, so you don't have to give up those family favorites. You can just convert them. Uh, if you look on my website, I made a lentil loaf that's just like my childhood meatloaf. Um, it still has the onions and green peppers that we had as a kid. Um, I added curry powder this time as an older person um, instead of just the salt and pepper when I was a kid. Um, and that meatloaf, that lentil loaf is delicious. So, you know, you can veganize your favorites and that's an, another way to help transition you to a plant-based diet.
So this looks great. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in our beans and we're gonna put in a tablespoon of our soy sauce. And the beans are already cooked. So really all you're doing is warming, warming this up. So my package instructions on my shells while this is all warming says to um, warm them for three to five minutes. So I'm gonna pop these in the oven. And then in the three minutes, this should be warm enough. So I talked about breakfast. Um, I wanna talk about vegan lunch. You know, this would make a great lunch. A nice hearty salad with beans would make a great lunch. Um, pasta with a red sauce without any meat or cheese um, with a side salad or a great soup or a great chili would make an awesome lunch or dinner. Like lunch and dinner, they're pretty much could be the same thing. Um, you can make amazing vegan lasagnas uh, with a tofu ricotta cheese ricotta cheese. It's just tofu that's seasoned um, to taste like cheese. Uh, you can make uh, anything that would be meat-based or animal product-based. You can make plant-based. Um, and there's a lot of great um, international food that is already plant-based, like Ethiopian and um, Indian and um, Mexican, Thai, there's already great plant-based options if you go that route. Um, so you don't have to worry about eating out. You may choose different restaurants once you're plant-based, um, but there's still lots of options available. Um, and then snacks, like I said, I usually go for fruit or vegetables for snacks. There's always hummus. There's always um, uh, like nut butter, but I try to keep that more minimal because there's a lot of calories in those items. Um, but when you're first starting out, if you um, want to lean on some crackers and nut butter, crackers and hummus, that's great. That's great. They're very convenient. You can find them anywhere. Um, so go for that. This is getting nice and warm. I'm going to taste it just to see where the flavor's at, see if it needs anything. Sometimes you may want to adjust the salt. No, I'm happy with that. It's nice and warm. So I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to get the plate ready so you can, guys can see how to plate this up. So I'm just gonna check on our coleslaw here. Now this, when it sits, the cabbage actually releases some water. So you may need to drain it out a little bit. Um, you'll see that it's starting to kind of, um, kind of absorb the, the liquid that we put in there. And so it's getting a little bit smaller. I did not put any salt in this. So you may, if you're um, used to having more salt on your food, you may wanna sprinkle a little salt on that. In the recipe, it will give a suggestion for how much salt you might wanna put in it if you want salt. So now I'm gonna grab my taco shells. And we're gonna plate this up. So I'm gonna add some of my bean vegetable filling here. Got that in there. Oh, I put a lot in there. I'm gonna add some in this one. I wish you guys were here so you could taste the food because that's part of of uh, people understanding that the food is delicious. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of the slaw for a nice crunch on top.
beautiful crunch on top. And then just to finish it off, I'm definitely gonna want a little bit of the salsa on top. If you had an avocado, you could mash that up with a little bit of lemon juice and put a, you know, a little quickie uh, guacamole on there. And then oftentimes I might serve this with some brown rice that has a little bit of salsa drizzled on top for just a little bit of flavor without a lot of work. So here we have our tacos. Oof, yes. I'm not gonna try one because it, it, you'll just have to watch me chew on camera and that's that would not be good. But these are delicious. Try them and comment on whether or not you like them, how you change them, um, and yeah. So the, the only other category I didn't talk about is uh, vegan desserts. So we do not have to give up dessert as vegans. I love dessert, I love chocolate. One of my go-tos is like a little square of dark chocolate, or I might make hot chocolate with plant-based milk. Um, I love making cakes every once in a while. So there are lots of recipes for making vegan cakes. You just use um, baking powder or baking soda instead of an egg. Um, you can also make an egg out of flax seeds or chia seeds. So tons of recipes on the internet for vegan desserts. Do not worry. Um, other than that, I really appreciate being here with you today. Uh, you guys allowing me to show you how flavorful and easy vegan lifestyle can be. And remember, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me um, through my website, rooteddish.com. You can find uh, the contact me information. Um, and also if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can find that information on my website as well. I would love to hear from you and it has been great to be here. Thank you guys.